Snake is an absolute classic in the video game world, and for a long time, people have been trying to recreate it on Scratch. In this tutorial, or tutorials, I will be teaching you my method of recreating Snake on Scratch with my own little twist. Oh, and it's all in one sprite. Let's get started! So as always, we're gonna start off by making a new project and then deleting everything in the Costumes tab. This is because our graphics will be generated by pen. Now we're going to drag in our when green flag clicked block and then we're going to make a new block called game loop. Click on OK. Then we're going to add in a forever loop underneath our define game loop hat block and a repeat until loop inside that. This will help set up our death loop later. Then we're going to quickly create a new block called move snake and plug that right inside our repeat until loop. And then don't forget to import pen if you haven't. And as you can see from my screen recording, I forgot to add in pen. Next, we're going to add in an erase all block right after move snake. Now, drag in point towards mouse pointer, and then a move x steps block. Um, in the video, I chose to say 4, because that is a pretty uh, decent speed. So if you click on the green flag right now, nothing will happen because our costumes tab is empty, so we have to create the graphics ourselves. Now we do this by making a new custom block called draw snake, make sure to click on when without screen refresh, and then plug that right after move snake. And underneath the draw snake block, we're going to say pen down and pen up. So if you click on the green flag now, there should be a tiny dot following your mouse pointer. So we'll obviously have to make that bigger. We'll do this by adding in a set pen size to X block. Oops, I've got the wrong block. And let's set that to 20 maybe. So that is a nice visible dot. There we go. So right now it's really just one dot moving around, which is not that fun. So in this next bit, we're going to work on creating a long tail for our snake. Create two new variables called x and y, both are for the sprite only, and these will help store our current position. Then we're going to go to list and make two new lists called x and y for the sprite only. Now, we're going to store the previous positions of our snake so that the tail knows where to go. Next, we'll quickly make a new block called setup and drag that right after the forever loop and before the repeat until loop. Now in here, we're going to simply reset all our variables and delete everything that is currently inside our list. Next, let's add in a go to x0, y0 block right after that so that our player always resets at the center. Great. Now, locate your move snake block, and we're going to start to store our positions into our lists. So, add in a insert thing at one of x block, and simply drag in the x variable inside. And we're going to do the same thing for y. This ensures that every time this loop runs, our current x and y position is stored at the very top of the x and y list. You can see that it's updating right there. Well, not quite. Now this is because our x and y variables are both set to 0 currently, so let's make sure to add in a set x to x position block right before that, and a set y to y position. Now I added in the round function because I thought that um, small decimals might mess up the algorithm, but it's not that necessary. So if we run our script now, you can see that our x positions and y position lists should be updating and indeed they are so that is great now using the data we have collected we're actually going to draw the snake tail right so go ahead and create a new variable called i for the sprite only and click on ok so at the beginning of draw snake we're going to set i to zero 
and make sure that draw snake is running without screen refresh. So to do that, simply right click on the defined block. Now we're going to drag in a repeat loop. Let's say repeat 10. It doesn't really matter, but essentially the time, the amount of times you repeat it will be the length of the snake. So let's just keep it at 10 for now. Now we're going to say change I by one within the loop. And then we'll simply drag in a go to X, X, Y, Y block from the motion section. And we're going to replace that with item I of the X list and item Y. Oh, sorry, item I of the Y list. So essentially what this does is that it's running through our list of player positions as we run the script. And it doesn't quite work yet because our player is actually going to the, its previous positions. So at the end of our define block, we're simply going to say go to x, x, y, y. And that should fix the problem. So if you run the script now, yay, um, the tail should be following the snake, which is really, really great, right? Because that is, you know, kind of the fundamental concept of the snake game. So what if you wanted to increase the length of the snake? Well, we'll do that by making a variable for it later. But for now, if you want a longer snake, then simply just increase the repeat value. So right now I have it at 50, and you can see that it has a much, much longer tail. So now let's actually make a variable for that. Let's make a new variable called length for the sprite only, and then drag that into our repeat loop. So now it's going to repeat whatever length value is and go back to your setup loop and let's just set length to uh, say 5. So to test this, simply click on the green flag and great, you can see that our snake is indeed responding to the length variable. Now this will be crucial because later on our snake wants to increase in length when we eat an apple or something, right? So let's go to your blocks and make a new block called draw apple click on OK. And now, listen to this part carefully. Drag draw apple in between move snake and draw snake. Now the ordering will be incredibly important later on, so it has to be in this order, otherwise the game will break. So underneath our draw apple block, let's simply duplicate these pen scripts from draw snake and stick it right under there. And finally, pop in a go to x0, y0 block to ensure that the apple will be located in the middle. So yay, if I run the script now, we have a white apple in the center of the screen. So you may notice that we can't really do anything with the apple yet, so we'll have to script that later. But for now, we're going to do some script optimization. So create a new block called stamp at x, x, and y, y, with size, size. So make sure you click on the um, add an input option on the left. Now, underneath this new block, we'll simply say go to x, x, y, y, and then we're going to set our pen size to size. Um, pretty straightforward. Now we're simply going to use this new block and replace the previous pen blocks we used. So drag that right in under draw apple, and let's say stamp at x, uh, I don't know, negative 100 and y0 with a size of 20, because that was our pen size. And voila! Everything works exactly the same. And let's also use that function inside our draw snake loop, but let's simply replace the x and y parameters with item i of x and item i of y, and simply drag that right in there. So yay, everything is working completely fine, but we saved ourselves a few blocks. We'll be using this block again in the future, so it's not going to be useless. Now let's actually start coding the apple so the player can do something with it. Let's make two new variables called AX, which stands for Apple X, for the sprite only, and AY, also for the sprite only. Now let's simply plug these new variables into our function so the apple goes to its apple x and apple y. And in our setup, let's simply set our apple x to pick random from let's say negative 200 to 200 
and set apple y to pick random from negative 170 to 170, so the apple goes to a different location each time we start the project. Great. So now let's actually start coding the collision between the snake and the apple. So go ahead and make a new block called collision detection. Um, click on OK. And let's add in that block right after everything else in the repeat until loop. So here's where things get a little complicated. Because we're only doing this in one sprite, we can't actually use the touching blocks. So we're going to use the distance formula instead to make sure if our snake is touching the apple. Now let me quickly build the script up because it is uh, quite complicated. But if you know maths, you might recognize this from the distance formula. So what does this random thing that I just made here actually do? Well, this is actually the distance formula, and it essentially finds the distance between two points. So the two points we're actually using right now is AX and AY, which is the apple's position, and X and Y, which is our snake's position. So this is really useful, because we can essentially say that if the distance between these two objects are less than, let's say, a value, then we can simply set the collision to 1 and we can trigger an event to happen. Um, feel free to pause the videos to build up the script. Now, based on what I said earlier, let's go to our operators and drag in a less than block. And in here, let's put in a value, let's say 25. Now, I know this value will be fine because our pen size is about 20, so 25 is only slightly bigger than that. And within our if statement, we can simply increase the length by, say, 4. And then we want to reset the apple's position, right? So simply um, duplicate our random script from the setup, and now our apple should relocate itself to another position. So let's actually run this project now. And boom! If I'm close enough to the apple, you can see that our snake is actually increasing in length, which is really, really great. So that's actually pretty much it for what I wanted to cover today. Again, this is part one, so in the next part, I'm hoping to cover more about player death, such as if the snake is touching the edge, or if the snake is touching itself, and maybe adding different um, cool features such as a shadow to the snake and apple, or a uh, cool boosting feature that when you hold your mouse down, the snake travels faster, and maybe adding a score. So that is something for you to look forward to in maybe one to two weeks when part two comes out. But until then, like and subscribe to show support for my channel and also if you enjoyed the tutorial. And finally, of course, stay safe.